Good morning. Friends, this is God's holy day, and we gather as God's holy people to worship together. Thank you so much for braving the cold and wet to come and be with us in worship this morning. It is so good to be together. Friends, we are here because we follow the way of Christ. And in that way of Christ, we believe in radical hospitality, which means that we know that not everyone who walks through our doors is Christian, but we only hope to be Christian to you. So we are so glad that you are here, no matter what brought you here this morning. We also believe in God's uh, welcome of all people ages, from the youngest ages to the oldest, and so we welcome children in worship. We have uh, activity sheets at the back and children's sermons and lots of friendly people for all of our children in worship. We are all God's children, and so we are so glad to be together in worship this morning. Friends, if you are new or visiting with us, um, we'd like you to find the fellowship pads in the pew aisles and write your name and address and pass them along so that we can greet you by name after the service. And now, on this cold and rainy day, we are here with warmth. So let us join our hearts in worship. Let us rise for the call to worship. Come and see. We hear the call of love ringing in our ears. Come and see. We see the light of stars and candles leading the way. Come and see. We long for a sign and experience to know God face to face. Come and see. We come to be part of God's story of love. We come to worship God. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Gracious and all-loving God, you call to us from cradles and candlelight, through shepherds and stargazers. When we have had our fill of candies and carols and cards, we look to the sky, and yours is the light which guides us and the voice which we long to follow. We pray that you would reveal yourself to us as we worship you. We live into the hope of another year, another way, that in seeking we will be found, and that all things be according to your will. In the name of your beloved Son, we pray. Amen.
gospel lesson today is from the book of Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. Listen for the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For you shall become a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time that the star had appeared, then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word so that I may pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, will you pray with me? Holy God, illumine our hearts, illumine our minds. Show us your way through your word and through your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name we pray, amen. On this day of stars and stargazing, we hear from another wise one, that of the poet Robert Frost. So let us listen to these words to us this morning. This is a poem called Choose Something Like a Star. O star, the fairest one in sight, we grant your loftiness the right to some obscurity of cloud. It will not do to say of night, since dark is what brings out your light. Some mystery becomes the proud. But to be wholly taciturn in your reserve is not allowed. Say something to us we can learn by heart and when alone repeat. Say something. And it says, I burn. But say with what degree of heat. Talk Fahrenheit, talk centigrade. Use language we can comprehend. Tell us what elements you blend. It gives us strangely little aid, but does tell something in the end. And steadfast as Keats' Eremite, not even stooping from its sphere, it asks a little of us here. It asks of us a certain height. So when at times the mob is swayed to carry praise or blame too far, we may choose something like a star to stay our minds on and be stayed. I have always, always loved stargazing. 
Yet the only C that I ever received in college was in my astronomy class. It was disheartening because I thought I was good at it, or at least gave it a good enough go. But it turns out that the cosmos of red and blue and white burning stars overhead was not the perfect fit when it came to lab sciences. Though I could identify planets and constellations, and I could talk about the movement of Pisces and Capricorn and Aquarius and new moons and first moons and blue moons, the science behind the black and white of the evening sky and my mythical knowledge was not what my professor was interested in. And my stargazing skills were better suited in the grocery store checkout lines than through a telescope. It seems that I was good at stargazing when it came to the tabloids. Those magazines, the sun and the star and people and us or US Weekly and all the other celebrity papers that occupy our attention while buying groceries. Full of that life-changing gossip of the stars, the rich and famous of Hollywood and the world as well as the knowledge of the cure-alls and the miracles from cancer to the fountain of youth, and then the weekly and the daily horoscopes. Astrology, the horoscopes, were always the most interesting. What to expect in the upcoming weeks and months and years, where we were going, what we were going to do. For years, my teenage friends and I, who often went to church and read such magazines as Seventeen and People, often said that we believed the stars, i.e. astrology and astronomy, are simply God's computer system. We didn't think we were alone. And I wonder if our wandering ones that we read about and hear about in Matthew's Gospel felt the same way. Those wise ones that enter our Christmas story and lead us in this season of epiphany, this season of realization and resolution, the ones who travel based on the stars. Now, we're never told how many wise ones there were were they male and female, what their names were, what their religion was, their country of origin, the color of their robes, what they traveled with, the containers that they carried, the frankincense, gold, and myrrh in. All we know about them is that they were educated, that they had means and knowledge to travel far and that they were stargazers. Persons who knew and believed enough about the stars in the sky and also enough about the stars on the ground. Those, the rulers and the kings and the famous people of their day and age, all combined, who would ultimately lead them home by another way. The stars in the sky pointed them to the stars on the ground. And all would have a change in the course of their lives. Now, as I was thinking about this epiphany text, what is new, what is different for this year for us, I was thinking about what it was about that one particular star that they were following. What did they notice? about its rising? Was it larger than the rest, or perhaps smaller? Was it first to appear as the sun set, or was it the last to fade at the sun's dawn? Did it glow white 
or red or blue? Did it appear green or pink? Did it dart overhead like the satellites of today? Or did it twinkle or blink? Did it move slowly across a seasonal sky? Did it flash with SOS type points, peace or love or joy? And how did they know what they would find without the faith in the myths of old? The words of the prophets who were not so old during their time, the wise words of the wise ones before them. Some scholars have said that the wise ones were magicians and believed in the stars rising as the marker of a birth or a death of the world's most famous and important. Did they know, truly, that following a star would lead them to Jesus and that they would ultimately kneel at the foot of God? Did they know that a star could really lead them and be just one more way that God was present with them in their daily lives? We know from Matthew's Gospel that when they came to Jesus, they felt joy. But when they knelt down with the gifts of royalty in their hand, what else did they feel? Were they tired? Were they relieved? Were they anxious? Or did they feel love? honor, perseverance, humility. And did these feelings swell within them as they began to walk away and return home by another way, forever changed by this journey of the star? Matthew's Gospel never tells us about what happened to the gifts that the wise ones brought to Jesus, or how Christ was changed by their visit to him. But we hear and we assume how the wise ones were changed by their journey, the journey there and the journey back how following the star ideally changed the course of their lives from the ones bringing gifts to the ones being gifted. I'm wondering if it's hard to think about today as we seem to be packing up all the pieces of the season. School is back in session tomorrow. And all we have left are some extra pounds around the middle, maybe. Presents that have been used or broken or returned. We've made our notes about how we should host our holiday parties differently next year. And we have a new year and a new hope before us. Resolutions have been made and broken and remade as we are four days in. But we are far from a season that is over because it is just beginning with the wise ones. My intention is not to read your horoscopes this day, nor am I suggesting that we somehow prolong the time of tinsel and twinkling lights. But what I am suggesting is that we, like our wise ones of long ago, follow a star. Because when we do, we have the opportunity to receive a gift. In many congregations, this Sunday, the one closest to Epiphany is known and has come to be known as Star Gift Sunday. 
where we receive the gift of a star, a star with a different gift upon it, a word that we cannot necessarily hold in our hands, rather our hearts. This morning in the first service, I picked up my star with the gift kindness. And this star I will see daily, as you will see your stars daily. In your rising and your retiring, whether you decide to place it in your Bible or upon your refrigerator or your bathroom mirror or on the dashboard of your car or take a picture of it to have as your screen on your phone. And with that star, spend the next year following it, seeing it daily. It's not something else for you to do, but something simply for you to follow to notice. Maybe it will lead to a time of prayer or journaling, of realizing the gift to us or your gift to many. Unlike the wise ones who had a star lead them directly to the God incarnate, that baby on earth in a manger, our stars are paper but they do point and lead us to God's presence in our lives if we let them. One star for each of us, one word given to us, and 365 days to journey with it. The gifts that have been given this morning, kindness, singing, chase, what was your word? Your gift. Learning. Learning. We have gifts of endurance, gifts of perseverance, gifts of humility. These stars are gifts to each of us. They're not just words to ponder, but directions that create roadmaps that all lead us to the same manger in Bethlehem. But our journey there with God overhead and in hand is going to be different for all of us. Throughout the year, we will invite you to talk about your star gift journey. And next year at this time, we will share the gift of this year and then receive another star for the year ahead. My friends, out of receiving comes sharing. And by sharing the journey, by noticing where we have been and where we are being led, and how one gift leads to many moments and many more gifts along the way. As we journey forward into this new year with a new way, may it be so for you as you follow your star. You have the opportunity to have your stars today as you come to the table for communion. So as you come to this table this day, you will be invited to choose a star by color, not by word. You can choose it out of the box or off the table and then receive communion. May this be so. May you be blessed. Happy New Year. Amen.
Friends, as we come into a time of offering, there are many ways that we can offer our time and talents and treasures to the life of our church here at Westminster. I'd like to invite you to take a look at the insert that is in your bulletin and want to highlight just a couple of events coming up. Um, the first uh, coming up is, as I think you have heard, next week, a week from today, will be a celebration of my installation, um, which will be an exciting time. The worship service will begin at 4 o'clock a week from today. There will be um, people from my life who are very near and dear to me who are um, speaking and who are wonderful. I hope you will come and hear them. Um, it's an exciting event, and uh, there will be a reception following hosted by CCN. It will be a joyful time for all, so we hope that you will be there. Friends, we have come asking for the child, wondering where love might be born, seeking that joy that might satisfy our thirst, wandering through the darkness so we have come to this place where wise people and shepherds and young women meet. We have come to this place called Bethlehem, to this place where our hearts rise like yeast, to this place where we meet our newborn hope, to this place where we taste our deepest joy. There is something here that will satisfy our hunger. No matter how long that we have wandered, here our hearts arise. Our light has come, and in this bread and in this cup, we celebrate something we can't quite understand. Because God satisfies our hunger in the most unlikely of places. Now and always, it is with the expectation that we come to this table to taste and to see that God is here. Friends, let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of wonder and mystery, God of the stars and the universe, God of winding ways and straight paths, we gather today with gratitude for the gift of your constant presence, your trustworthy guidance, and your daring risk-taking with us. You dare to love us despite our inability to respond fully. You dare to care for us despite our challenge in caring for others. You dare to walk with us despite our fickleness. Therefore, we sing with the saints of every time and place. guiding points you put before us. You continue to lead us forward, guiding us by the teachings of Christ, to seek justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly in your loving shadow. Help us to remember how a newborn baby might grow into a little child that would one day turn to his hope-filled friends, offering food and forgiveness, comfort and care, patience, and prayer. May we remember and may we follow, for you are great, and so is the mystery of faith.
Holy Spirit, come into this bread and this cup. Transform these ordinary objects as you change our hearts to shape and form your world with the joy you promise. Pour your grace upon us so we overflow with your love. This we pray in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When Jesus was gathered with his friends, he took a loaf of bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, given for you. This is the bread of life for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. And as the communion servers will come forward, our communion is today by way of intinction. First we will serve the choir, and then when we turn to the congregation, you may come forward by the center aisle, choose your star, and then come for your communion and return to your seats by the side aisle. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God, the table of the Lord. Let us share in the feast that is prepared. Friends, let us join together in our prayer of gratitude. We, we give you thanks, O oh God, that we have been invited to your table and fed with the bread and cup of life. May this meal fill us May we be guided by your life, following in the footsteps of shepherds and sheep, wise ones and no ones, along paths seen and unseen. May your spirit arise within us as we arise in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My friends, may you go forth into this day, into this season, into this new year with peace and with joy, with kindness and with singing, with healing and with learning and with humility and with perseverance and all the other gifts that you have been given this day. And may the blessings of God, the Creator, the Redeemer and Sustainer be with you this day and even forevermore. Arise, your light has come. Go forth and shine. Let the people of God say, Alleluia. Amen. Friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share that peace.